I'm Terry. Welcome to Adventures in Nature. We've got an interesting adventure for you today, a sweet adventure. We're at the home of Victoria and Ron Herbal, and they've got honeybees. Yes, honeybees. We're going to see the process of extracting the honey and taking care of the bees. So come on with me. You're going to see something truly amazing. A sweet treat. <clears throat> That is completely full. It's dripping with honey. Yeah, it's dripping with honey. Oh my god. They haven't filled this one up yet. They built all the comb out, but they're still filling it. It has some nectar in there now, but not they haven't filled it. So this box is almost ready. This one box is close to being ready and this lower box is full of honey so that'll be a good good one to harvest. Hi I'm Victoria Jackson and I'm Ron Arbel and this is the day that we are going to highlight our honey harvesting. I've taken a few frames of honey off from our bees and we're going to spin it which means we're going to bring it inside from the beehive and then we're going to cut the caps off the comb that the bees sealed their comb with, and then we're going to put it into our spinner and get our pure liquid gold. That is key bee honey, if you didn't know. And I will show you each step of the way, taking the frame out, as Ron said, showing you how we open up the wax cap and how the honey comes out and spins. So Terry's here today to help us show you the whole process. Glad you could join us. And I'll be right back with a few bees. This is our backyard apiary here at Key Biscayne. Um, there's two boxes here that you see. One is blue on the bottom, the other is blue on the bottom. Each one of those is called a colony. There's an empty box between those two boxes. That would be called a hive. Um, that's just an empty box with no, nothing in it. These are the two beehives that are in our backyard. I'm going to remove one of the boxes so we can extract the honey from it. And what I'm going to do first is give them the bees a little bit of smoke. Um, it calms them down and it actually, actually what it does is it, it masks any pheromones that they may put out saying that they're being attacked. So it doesn't put them to sleep, it doesn't make them high, it just masks those pheromones. And then I'm going to take the top off and I'm going to spray a board with, with some natural product called Be Gone. It's a cherry smelling spray. Well, that's full. That is full. Wow. Each one of those is called a colony. There's an empty box between those two boxes. That would be called a hive. Um, that's just an empty box with no, nothing in it. Between the upper blue box and the wood colored box, there is a queen excluder. It's a wire mesh which is just big enough for the worker bees, the female unfertile bees, to pass through, but the queen, being larger, cannot pass through that. So the bottom two boxes there is where the queen will lay all the eggs and raise her babies, raise the young. This is the empty box. Inside the box, there's a, a total of 10 frames like this that the bees will build their wax on. The bees will build out on that with natural wax that they make and then they'll fill each one of those hexagon shells or containers with honey or pollen and then they seal it with beeswax to keep it from running out. This is how it starts out, an empty frame and the bees will build each one of those go in here. So what are you doing now, Ryan? 
I am assembling the frames for the beehive, for the brood. The bees will make the honey, I'm sorry. The quick process. And this is the artificial honeycomb. This is the artificial honeycomb. It's man made, it's plastic, and it's coated with beeswax so the bees feel at home with it, comfortable. And the bees just go in and out all day long. These are all, what, the worker bees? These are all the worker bees. Uh, okay, look, there's one. This is a male bee here. He's larger. And he does not sting. Oh. I'll try to catch him for you. Maybe he's the male bee. He's a, a drone? A drone. That's the drone bee. They're a little bit larger than the worker bee, and they do not sting. Their only purpose is to mate with the queen. It's pretty good. I can pick them out of a needle in a haystack. It's amazing. You saw in it. In flight. The two blue boxes on the bottom, do you ever touch those boxes? You never touch them. You only um, open them up and look inside to inspect them to make sure the queen is doing her job and laying enough eggs. So you're just basically taking the spare honey. Correct. There's always honey in the bottom box. Now usually there's only one bottom box and then the queen excluder. But one time, I don't know how, the queen got through that wire mesh and so she was laying eggs in that second box. So I just gave her a double nursery there to... Give her so a little more space. It's a very strong hive, you know, so... And then the one on the other end, the blue, and I imagine you painted it blue so that you know that's the... The bottom box. No, it just had blue paint. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good and answer. And I'm going to take the other, um, the top wooden box off uh, for, we'll spin that one today as well. So each box will weigh between 50 and 80 pounds when they're completely full. Amazing. Which is a heavy, that's a heavy box. It's a heavy box of honey. Maybe more than 50 pounds. I notice there's a little water jar on the top of the box in, the, in there. Is that for something? Yes, that's a feeder, a water feeder for them. Um, they need to have a source of water close by. And that's just one way to help them out. It's just uh, supplying them with some additional water. Uh, we try to encourage them to stay here. How do they get into it? They don't. Um, well, they do from the inside. There's an opening. Oh, from underneath the wood? Underneath. So they're in the shade and they have, they can get right. in there. Right. Well, they come in from the inside of the, they can crawl in there. Brilliant. So this is made just for bees? Just for bees. A bee watering hole. And it's just plain water. Just no plain sugar. water. No sugar. Now we, uh, northern climates, the beekeepers will feed their bees a sugar water in the fall um, to keep them maintained through the winter months. But down here, we don't need to feed our bees anything. There's enough flowers for them to go year-round, which is great because we do get a supply of honey year-round this way. And how often do you harvest your honey? Or Usually, we harvest three times a year. This past year, because of Hurricane Irma, we had no honey from December until now. It really hurt the bees. You figure all the wind you know, just blew all the flowers away and, and put the trees into somewhat what of a shock as well. They weren't flowering as often. And did you lose a lot of bees? I lost several colonies um, during the hurricane from high water. You know, this backyard had two feet of water in it. Um, these hives here were okay. I had another one over in the other part of the yard. It was lower and um, they were destroyed. I take uh, hurricane straps and I strap them down to the ground, you know, to keep them from blowing away or tipping over, and then we just have to pray that the water doesn't get that high. Wow. I didn't realize you had so much water in here. Oh, came right up to the door. This is full of honey. 
and it is very, very heavy. So we are here in what is also our laundry room. Um, we're back here because we want to keep the room warm and this job is a little messy too so we just keep it all together in our honey room. Um, the reason you keep the room warm is because once I open up that wax cap we want to keep the honey as liquid as possible. That is when we open up the wax cap, put the honey into the spinner. It just makes it so much easier to keep all the honey flowing. What's interesting though is a lot of people ask us about the honey, propolis, royal jelly, bee pollen. The great thing is the way that we take the um, frames right out of the box and put and open them up. All of that is in our honey. We don't separate it all. When you get our honey, it's raw, unpasteurized honey. And you will find, of course, the delicious honey, the pollen. Sometimes we even find the dry granulars of pollen, which is wonderful. The royal jelly is in each frame, in each comb. So we'll take this inside the house now, and then we'll do that whole process of spinning it and removing the honey from the comb. And are there bees inside of there? No, it's empty now because I, I used that beak on it and drove them all down to the bottom boxes. Um, oh. Unpasteurized honey. The reason this is unpasteurized is because we're taking it right out of the box, opening the wax cap, and spinning it. Pasteurized honey would be the comb would come out, people would heat up the honey, and the wax and the honey would separate as it cools. And this makes probably a much easier process, but you're killing all the healthy properties, the royal jelly, the propolis out of the honey. Excuse me, here comes Ron with our first batch. Coming, coming. Smells good. So each one of these will go into here three at a time. And we initially, initially we scrape all of these cappings off. This is the bees seal it so it doesn't drip out. Oh. And we scrape those cappings off and we save the capping because it's wax. And then we seal our seal our bottles with them. But like some of it is just oozing out. Just um, take a finger full. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. The bees have made, I'm going to turn this around, the honeycomb, which is beautiful. They fill each cell with the wax and then they seal it with this wax. It's amazing because honey is the only food source that will never spoil unless it gets wet. It may crystallize, but it will never spoil unless it gets wet. And the bees know that, so they make this wax to protect the honey. And what happens when it gets wet? Does it mildew or something? It can start to ferment. It'll ferment. And what happens when you ferment grapes? You get wine. What happens when you ferment honey? You get mead. Mead. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> so, you can see this particular frame. Some of it's covered, some of it's not. So what I'm going to do is just open up, scrape this open, and um, I won't scrape this. But you'll see, I'm going to go ahead and start doing this while it's nice and warm. I'm going to start the process. Oh my gosh, look at that. Careful. <laughs> that is amazing, just amazing. This is my tool, real fancy. What I do is I literally scrape open those wax caps and you can see the honey start coming out. So you can see, and I try to be delicate enough, I mean it's okay if I break it, but if I scrape it gently enough and put it in, sometimes we can save some of this comb and then the bees won't have, they'll repair it, but they can just go ahead and fill that up again. And what I'm doing in here now is I will save wax caps. We melt that down later to seal our bottles. But you can see now the honey's starting to ooze out of there. Let me scrape that one a little bit more. And 
what happened to the bees? They're all back at home at their hive. Wondering what happened. <laughs> okay, this is the spinner where we put the frames of honey into, and then centrifugal force. This spins and spins and spins. Right. And the centrifugal force will sling the honey out of the frame, and it all drains into here. And then we open this up, and it drains into a filter into our five gallon container and then from there we um, just filter it one more time and then we bottle it. So you don't have to boil it or anything? No, there's no, there's heat, no tre heat to there's it There's no heat treating to it at all. So I'm putting this into the spinner now and we will put three of those frames in there. It's going to spin the honey, honey out oil. of the frame. It's like a centrifuge. It spins and... This is beautiful honey. It's a very light colored honey. Pretty. I'll have to get some spoons so Terry can taste along the way too. And different hives? Do different hives have different flavors? They do. It depends on their location. Whatever flowers, trees, and plants are around, um, that's what they'll collect. So yes, even interesting enough, we have hives located around Key Biscayne and different boxes have different flavors because of the plants that are. Let me show you this. These dark spots in here are actually just the pure pollen. Those are quite wonderful. That's pollen. the pollen, yes. Uh -huh. And that's what's so expensive when you buy it separate. Yes. And sometimes, you know, we'll have to get a spoon. I'll have to give you a little bit of that too. It's quite delicious. <laughs> This is actually called propolis. This is what the bees use as glue to maybe um, inside of the, the frames to hold things together. But this is what medicine is made out of for sometimes people when they have colds, they'll have the propolis. That's what it's made from. You can see this part. And that's the glue of the hive. And the bees make that. The yeah. bees make everything. They make it's amazing. They make the wax from enzymes. They make to make the comb and also to seal. The they make the honey by consuming it. Now remember, they're not humans, but they will consume the pollen and the nectar. And the nectar from flowers. And they regurgitate it, and that's how the honey is made. <laughs> the propolis is what they expel. Propolis is like a heavy wax, um, but it has different enzymes and proteins and stuff in it. And it, it almost works like glue um, or a very well-defined water repellent for the hive. And this is beautiful. Again, uh, this is a hobby for us, and we are operating under the um, state of Florida cottage rule process, where we're allowed to do this in our home, and we are allowed to sell the honey from our home, and we're allowed to have bees at our home. We do have the hives inspected every year. It's required, and we actually love it. They come out and make sure the hives are healthy, that they don't have any type of insects that could harm the hive itself, other people, um, agriculture. They also make sure that we do not have Africanized bees. Africanized bees can have a really bad attitude. <laughs> Our bees are actually European bees. We've been told that most of the bees that we know come from Italy. So, the key bees, honeys, are just all local workers. Okay. <laughs> so this is the process of removing the honey from the honeycomb. This is my spin classes, uh, <laughs> if people want to know. It smells so good. I wish we had smell o vision <laughs> This is perfect. It's gorgeous.
and then I take the frame out and flip it over so we can spin the other side. You can see this side is pretty much Oh gone. yeah. And now this one is still full. So you scrape, Victoria, just to loosen up the uh, wax. To so open it? up the wax caps to allow the honey to come out. You see how it's coming out now? Because if not, it's all sealed. Now it's exposed, and so when it spins, it will all come out. The wax caps are here. We saved those so we had the bees wax, and actually, we can make, sorry, we can make things like the candles then. How convenient. <laughs> These are larger frames. Oh yeah, heavier. This part of the honey, I won't scrape that. It has a light coating over it, but we just open up the part that actually is covered with the wax. And of course, we do need to remove a couple of bees. The girls, the working girls. Yeah, kind of got smooshed in there. Remove that. Let's see the other side of this. So you can see this is all filled in here, but it's not quite ready. But that will stay in there, but I will open up this other part. They say the comb is um, at least 30 to 40 percent capped. You can take it all. Right. If it's 30 40 percent what? Capped. capped, if it's covered. So in other words, if we pulled the frame out and it only looked like this without any of the wax on it, that's not ready. Even though the honey's perfectly fine, it's just not ready to... It just needs to mature a mature little, a little bit more. Age. And what got you guys into honey? What? Uh... Well, I know that I started reading more and more about the bees dying out, and Ron and I would discuss that, and he informed me that he used to have hives here on Key Biscayne, down at what we know now is where the tennis center is. I'll let you tell him more about that. But um, so when we decided to do it, he already had some knowledge. And that was just the beginning of it. We got one hive and it went from there. When I first moved to Key Biscayne, I had a landscaping business. It was called The Good Earth, thanks to Pearl Buck. <laughs> and I would go down to South Bay to buy my plants and I had an old timer down there that had bees and fascinated by him. So I started helping him and he had eight colonies that he was taking care of and he passed away and the wife said, just take the bees. So I, he was down off of Bird Road at 100 and way out west. That is heavy by the way. <laughs> So I brought all the bees out here to keep us game, and I put them out where the now Lipton Sony Tennis Center is. There used to be a landfill out there, it used to be a dump for the county. And I brought all the bees out there, and they started building the tennis center, so I had to move them. And I put the eight beehives after moving them from the Lipton Tennis Center which used to be a landfill. I put them behind the Dade County Fire Station because I was part of the volunteer fire department then. And then one year, soon after, Dade County came out and sprayed for mosquitoes and killed them all. And I said, no, nope, I'll never do it again. <laughs> and since that time, you know, I became a professional firefighter for Key Biscayne. And one day, Somebody called the fire station in a panic that they had bees at their house. So I said, okay, I'll go take a look. And that got us started again. And it's been about five years now. And it's been um, a good ride. It's mm -hmm. completely filled You see how it's filled and capped. And it's, it's, that's just, that's perfect. <laughs> Now, in nature, if it was full like that, what would the bees do? They would, um, as they needed it to, for food source, they would chew through that wax cap uh -huh. and 
they would eat it. It's their food. Okay. So this is like their ref their pantry. <laughs> you know, they want a, a quick meal. They just go and. So they just keep making and storing, making and storing. Making and storing, making and storing. Isn't it amazing how things evolved? Like the gentleman, you know, his wife gave you the, his hives. Mm -hmm. I didn't find a need for it then, you know. Um, I wasn't trying to pollinate all the flowers. I was trying to raise bees and, and get honey for, right. for my family and you know, friends. Nice. But I meant to move a hive. To there's, move a hive. There, there's a de tremendous need to move hives. Yeah. Because most bee people, that are, they're exterminators. They're not bee well, removal, it's bee extermination. That's true. We just leave it in our honey, so when you purchase our honey, you do get the pollen in there, the royal jelly, everything is in there. But this is really special when it comes in big clumps like that. We're going to let Ron have that when he comes back as a treat. <laughs> the bee pollen really helps with the allergies, um, helps with energy. The royal jelly, they've said, um, there's, you can, there's a lot to be said. Uh, royal jelly also high in energy. And I'll just say, for all aspects of women's problems, royal jelly is the answer. Here, Ron, a nice treat for you. Yummy. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> good. <laughs> really good. And we don't double dip, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> How much would you say that this weighs? Just Three pounds? I don't know, a little bit more than that. Here, take it, Ron, and put it in there. You'll tell me. That one weighs a lot. That was about five pounds. No. It's probably three or four pounds. See in there all of this beautiful pollen. That is really special. And some of that will come out when we spin, yeah. so it's in, it's in the honey it's as well. It's in the honey. But today we make the mess of spinning, and then we clean everything up, and everything is you know sealed in these containers. And then we'll fill all the bottles, and then Ron will take the time after to seal them all with the wax that we melt from this and label them. Oh, I need to have some of this pollen too. You have to excuse me. Why don't you ask Ron a question so I can grab a bite of this with my <laughs> fresh spoon. <laughs> this is special, special. It is special. When you realize how great this sperm mm. it's just amazing. You don't always get that, like that much. And we've been asked by um, residents, you know, where our honey comes from and whether it's pure and organic. We do have our hives here on Key Biscayne. I have them located in people's backyards by permission. They get a percentage of the honey and it's perfectly legal in terms of zoning in the state of Florida that we can have up to three hives in a residential property. I also have extra hives that are on Virginia Key um, in the wetland area, which is all protected. No spraying goes down, on down there, you know, because it's an environmentally sensitive uh, location. And the predominant plant that the bees will collect from down there are the mangroves you know, and the sea grape trees, which are lining the coastline in there. So it's a very, this is from that area, the honey you're seeing now. And it's a very light colored and very flavorful honey. So um, that's where our bees are. And no pesticides ever? There should not be any pesticides down there because, again, it's an environmentally protected area. Um, Key Biscayne, um, I'm on a do not spray list with Metro Dade in terms of the mosquitoes. But I've also lobbied to our own village people that we don't need to spray for mosquitoes out here unless the traps that we have put out, the village has put out, and tested for Zika infected mosquitoes, then they will spray. But other than that, there shouldn't be any spraying going on for mosquitoes, which will also hurt the bees. You know, it'll kill them.
And the wax, do you do something with the wax? We do. We use that to, we'll melt it down, and then we'll seal our honey bottles with it. We put the cork in, and then dip it in and seal our honey bottles. I've also started making wax candles with that, and I do plan to learn what else I can do with the wax. There's lots to, lots to do. We go to bee school every now and then and learn as much as we can. <laughs> How many bees does it take to make a teaspoon of honey, Ron? The statistics are that it takes 12,000 bees flying 112,000 miles and visiting 4 million flowers to make one pound of honey. Each bee in its life will only make one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey during its whole life. And here we have gallons. Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs>